Hey, welcome back. So I have a question for you. First, are you a writer? Secondly, did you ever write a short story? And then say, you know, I bet you I could have made this a novel. Or even have people read the story and say, that should be a novel. Guess what? Our next guest did exactly that. Wrote a short story and then said, hmm, I can make this a novel. My name is Vin DeQuino. His name, Joe Laguadis. Joe. How are you? How are you, my good, friend? Good. You wrote a short story I did. that became a wonderful new book. That's right. It's called Blue Baby. Yes. Show us that cover. There, there it, is. it is. The wonderful Blue Baby. And Blue Baby is not really a true story. It no. is fiction. Tell me a little bit about this book and about you. Who are you, Joe? Okay, yeah, the book started, uh, as you said, as a short story. And where do we get ideas? Uh, the short story happened off of something I read out of the newspaper. Uh, a little boy who needed a heart transplant at seven years old. Wow. For some reason it moved me and I pulled it into my head and created Blue Baby as a short story first, then it got picked up in 2010, so we're going back some time. Yeah. By a publication called Toasted Cheese. Uh, I think they're out of Canada. Yeah, they're up north. Right. And they put it on the internet, and it was great, and I got good feedback. And when I was sitting around saying, gee, I wonder what I should write next, well, people seem to like the story. So I said, why not flesh it out? Yeah. And that, that's what I did, and it became the book. And it's something about characters. You know, people say to me, what do you like most about writing? And I say, the fact that characters come to life for me. They become people. So when you wrote this short story, you actually created life. Yes. You created characters who lived in your head and said, I ain't dying. <laughs> I yeah. want to keep going. That's it. And, and you uh, did. Yeah. And uh, they go to bed with you, <laughs> Yeah. so to speak. Yes, yeah, so uh, to speak. You know, they eat dinner with you. They go to work yeah. with you. And, you wake uh, up in the middle of the night. And there they are. There they are. Uh, you keep that notebook next to you. You get an idea. Yeah. Uh, you have to research for them. You know, it's a short book. So 200 pages is not a long book these days. But the research that goes into it, you put a lot of work into it. So you get connected yeah. to them. And it's interesting uh, because the topic wasn't really yours. No. It, it was like with me. When I wrote my first book, Kiss the Candy Days Goodbye, I wrote about a young boy with diabetes. I didn't have diabetes. My children didn't have diabetes. My siblings didn't have diabetes. Right. But one of my wrestlers, I was a wrestling coach. He had diabetes. And, you know, he asked me, he said, do you know anything about it? And I said, no. And I began to research diabetes. And diabetes came to life for me, just like the character. Right, it does. And here, I, I, I hear you 100% when you tell me this little girl with the scar across right. her chest just hit you, man. And it became part of who you are. And it became a story that you had to tell. Right, yeah. And that's right. The character in the book is a girl, not like the little boy. Yeah. Um, and in my family, yeah, you're right. There's no big history of heart disease. I did... My, growing up, my mother did have a brother who died at 36 wow. of a heart attack. I was just a little baby, a year yeah. old. So, but I remember hearing about that. So it was kind of a theme. Yeah. But not to the degree the that the book is. Pieces come together. Right, yeah. They come together. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so so you had this little girl in your mind. Tell me about that short story. What was that short story about? It was how she suffered. Yeah. Or yeah. How, uh, what, I actually picked a particular ailment uh, called hypoplastic left heart syndrome, which was what the little boy had in the article. And that is when your heart, when one half of your heart is born a lot smaller than the other half. Wow. So what happens is the heart tries to make up ground and it just enlarges to try to keep pace with the body, but it can't. Eventually it's going to fail and you have to get a heart transplant. And uh, What's different about a heart transplant is somebody else has to die for you to get that heart. Yeah, uh, and it has to be compatible. It has to be compatible. That's all in the book. Uh, and it, the book follows not only Maddie, 
but the life of the person that will become her donor. So there's kind of a giveaway in the book because yeah. you can put that together, but I had an editor and he said, you know what? Yes, you see that that's going to happen. He said, but it does work because you still don't so know how. So when the book begins, he's still alive. Yeah, oh yeah, it follows his life and her life, uh, her life as a baby to her teens, and then his life picks up in his teens. So she, does she get to meet him when he's alive? No, she oh. never does. Wow. Uh, she meets his family, uh, which doesn't always happen either. Some people yeah. choose not to in real life, but some people choose to, and uh, she wow. chose to. Um, so yeah, and it makes it different because you know a tragedy has to happen to get that heart. Yeah. But right now, and yeah. there's no other way. One loss. I mean, but isn't that life? Yes. Life begins from death. I mean, That's right. you know, all of our ancestors are dead. Or not all, but many. Most. You know, and we come from people who no, are no longer here. Right. Uh, so it's fascinating. Um, yeah, and uh, watching YouTube videos, I had the benefit of knowing a heart doctor um, and uh, watching a heart transplant on TV is unbelievable. And they're yeah. talking and they do it and they take the heart yeah, out and put the new routine. one in. And they do it in under an hour because they have to because your brain does figure out, hey, I'm on a monitor here. Uh, this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. So they got to get it done quickly. And then they put that new heart in and that thing starts pumping. You see the old one. And it's hardly working. Yeah. And the doctor now, says, wait till I put the new one in. And he puts it in, and that thing comes to life. It's unbelievable. Where does the medical background come from, Joe? As far as? As far as your knowledge, I mean, you must have had a sense, at least, of the medical end of this book. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Frank Dorsa, uh, Westchester Medical Center, was Great. somebody that I knew that helped me. Um, couple of nurses, uh, emergency room nurses. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, I had the same thing when I went, when I did the book on diabetes. I didn't know beans about diabetes. Right. I had no you idea. Know, it's a long process. Yeah, it's a long process. Yeah, and I went and talked to some of these doctors, I mean, top physicians who said, uh, yeah, I'll sit with you. And they sat and they went over all of the things that I would have to make sure that I covered in the book. Uh, the other scary thing, and it's still scary to me, is that uh, when I wrote the book, diabetes was in a place that it isn't in today. Right. The whole idea of how to treat it, what it was all about, what they knew about patients, has changed over the last 20 years. So it must have been scary for you to realize that some of the procedures that you were learning may change. Right, um, and in fact, I did see that, uh, especially with the uh, anti-rejection drugs, they they change a lot. Yeah, uh, and they've come a long way. These weren't these transplants weren't possible without them. Uh, so you'll write another book about another heart transplant. Yeah, maybe continue Maddie's life. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. see what her life would be like going on with wow. the new heart. Yeah, so. write a book about Maddie giving her heart. To someone else. <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> Third generation. You never wow. know. Then I'd have to kill nice. Maddie. I don't want who to do knows? that. No, yeah, you don't want to kill Maddie. Uh, so Maddie became a young lady. When the book ends, how old is Maddie? She's only a uh, uh, high school student. Wow, she's only in high school. Yeah. But she's doing well and she's... Yes, and the book ends, uh, not to give it away, but... No, she, yeah, you don't have to... Yeah, they do. She wants to... She, I'll just say she she's wants to... She's able to move on. She wa yeah, and she wants to meet the people where this kid came yeah. from that helped her. Oh, yeah, that's it's wonderful. Yeah, so. It's good. So it's a book that really can help other people. How does the short story differ from the novel? Good question. Um, you got to pack a lot into a short yeah. story. And you got, uh, you know, the characters aren't quite so fleshed yeah. out. You just don't know them as well. This is a classic example of what I tell my writers. I work with writers all the time. Uh, and I tell them, if you breathe life into your character and make them human, they will live in you. And they will want to talk to you and tell their stories. And they'll want you to know details about them that you didn't know before. And they, in a sense, are not the same person you birthed. You gave birth to them. It's just like giving birth to a child. When that child grows, that child is very much a part of you, 
but very much independent, very much a separate being from the being you created. Same here. Uh, yeah, and interestingly, yeah. I went through the process of having kids in the middle of this. So, yeah. you know, that's yeah. another perspective. She was already born she was when born, you started this book. Yeah, and in the book, she's born sick. She's born blue. That's why she's blue baby. Wow. Uh, so, and then you have your own kids, and you realize how lucky you are that you have these two kids, and they're perfectly healthy. Yeah, uh, I'll never forget when I was growing up, I met a blue baby. And he was probably about 14. His name was Russell. I have no idea if Russell's still alive. I have no idea, but he was blue. And in those days, back in, whew, I don't even want to tell you, uh, you know, the early 70s, 60s, uh, heart transplants were a thing of the future. Right. They yeah. didn't happen yet. And I don't know if Russell ever made it. I just remembered that term, blue baby. Right. And he used it. He would, when, when people would say to him, something wrong with you, he'd say, I, I'm a blue baby. I never knew what blue baby was. Yeah. Then when you came along and I saw your book, I said, oh my God, Russell. Uh, yeah, it's all about oxygen. <laughs> yeah, That's and, and, and I, I don't know if he's, he was literally blue. His lips, you could see it. There was a blue tint to his skin. Yeah, yeah. Just... Uh, so it's fascinating and it's an interesting story. And you're, you get involved in other people's lives. Uh, tell me about your writing process. Okay. Uh, well, again, I mentioned my kids. <laughs> so that uh, used to be, you know, even if you don't have kids, if you're a full-time yeah. worker. Oh, you have children? I do. I have two. Uh, it used to be come home from work and hit the computer as quick as you could before you started watching the ball game or whatever. Now, <laughs> come home and there's another job. I know. So now I'm getting to it. When I can get to it at night, it's probably not till 9, 9.30. Yeah, that's what I do. I write in the middle of the night because yeah. my wife's asleep. Everybody else who would normally want my attention are sleeping. So they leave me alone. And that's what I do. Even t today, I write 1 o'clock till maybe 5 o'clock. Yeah. I go back to bed. Fortunately, I'm retired now, so I could do my own writing. I'm a nocturnal writer. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and uh, so it's interesting. Uh, so you do write at night? I do. Uh, I don't want to act like I write every night. It's impossible. No, it's impossible. it's impossible. I don't either. Yeah. When I write, I write at night. And I find I don't now, always write at night. Yeah, and I find now I'm writing more short stories because they fit into my life. They're work. It's yeah. a lot of work to make yep. a short story actually function, but I can get them done. You know, the kids are running in the office, in and out, in and out, yeah. in and out. And, and those fine. characters live in you. Yeah. Uh, when I first got married, I was in the throes of writing. And I used to have to go to my mother-in-law's for holidays or Sunday dinners. And I would be sitting there, and the story would be, because I had spent the night before writing, so the story would be playing, and my mother-in-law would go, stop writing! <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say, I'm not! She'd say, yes, you are! I said, yes, I am. <laughs> you know? well, at least she knew. It's true. Yeah, she knew. And she knew that, you know, it goes on in your head. And even, at, you know, when you're teaching, you know, you're teaching, and the stories are going on, you know, and, and they want to be written. And that's how you know you're a writer when you're being haunted by your characters. Yeah, I, I met a writer once uh, at Barnes & Noble. She was, I think her last name was Goldberg. And she was, she was uh, advocating for her book. And she said, for a man writer, it's the closest you'll ever be to being pregnant. <laughs> yes, Carrying you're those giving characters. birth yeah. to characters. Yeah. I'm telling you, some of these characters are still alive. I, I, I very seldom reread the books I've written. But when I do go back, it's like meeting old friends. Yep. It's like seeing your kids after college. And, and publishing the book is like sending them to college. They go off, and I, I almost don't want to finish a book sometimes. Right. Because I don't want to leave this, their world. Right. I don't want to leave these characters. They're mine. That's right. They're mine. I parented them. 
Yeah, you did, and you did a lot of work to create them. So you write at night, you put yeah. it all together, you write on a computer, laptop? I do, I do, yeah. Um, what I do is whatever I'm doing, always the computer, but there's always a notebook dedicated along with it because I need to make notes and, and stuff like yeah. that. And uh, I don't have any outlines. I usually have an idea of where I want to go in the yeah. end, and that's enough for me. I, I tell my writers, you don't have to know the ending of the book because guess what? It's going to change before you get there. But you do have to have a sense of where you're going. Right. Can you change along the way? Absolutely. But try to have a sense of where you're going. That's what it is. It's a feel. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to bird walk. You're going to go off in directions you don't want to go. And there's times when I've written an entire chapter and said, it doesn't belong in this book. Wrong chapter. Oops. Yep. Get back on track. Yep. And I had to go back and try to get more on track. Yeah, yeah. A lot of editing. Uh, a lot of, you got to kill your darlings, is that what they say? Your stuff that you wrote that you're like, it just like you said, it doesn't fit. Yeah. You got to get rid of it. Yep. And, and, uh, and it's hard. It is. Because you own it. And you, you spend know? And it's how like, many hours doing it. No. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's, you don't maybe have to delete it. You just get it out of there and print it and maybe keep it yeah. for something else. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and sometimes, just like your kids' compositions and artwork from first grade, Sometimes you have to <laughs> yeah, let it go. Yeah, tell know? my wife that. Uh, Otherwise, you're going to have uh, boxes about. Yeah, yeah. I know. Me too. I still have things. I have things that I owned when I was in high school. Right. You know that you don't want to let go of. And as a writer, you do have to learn to let go. Yeah, you? it's hard because there's a little ego involved. Uh, yeah. I'm going to delete that. I wrote it. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. I, I work with uh, writers all the time. I have a writers group that I've had for 20 years, and. Some the hardest part sometimes is to tell a writer that paragraph doesn't work. Yeah, right. And they go, nope, blah, 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 that's my paragraph. And they say, yeah, but it doesn't fit in your book. Save <laughs> right. it for another book. Yeah. You know, and they don't want to let it go. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to do. And and writers are thick skinned. You better be, because if you're not thick skinned, you're going to be in trouble. Right. The greatest writers of our time have been rejected. Dozens of times. Oh, yeah. I keep that stuff, uh, lists of things I've read on my computer from writers, from Stephen King to Ernest Hemingway, who, who, who yeah. said he cried when he was rejected. I, I mean, know. Hemingway. So, I know. You know yeah, it because it's part of you. It's like, it's like someone saying to you, uh, that's your child? Nah, no good. Right. Get rid of it. Get another child. Not acceptable. And you're like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You know, and it's true. It's like losing part of your own. Yeah. You know, and it, it makes it really difficult. Yeah, it's a craft where you, you're alone with it, so it really is yours. I mean, it's yeah. something that you do. I know but you, it's, you, you're so alone. You don't write a piece. You work a piece. Right. You go in and you say, does this work? Does this work? You have to keep giving yourself checks. You go through. Uh, every writer has five tools. Every single fiction writer has five tools to work with. Plot, character, setting, theme, and tone. I don't care who you are, those are your five tools. Plot, does the storyline work? You have a scene in here that has absolutely nothing to do with your plot, get it the hell out of there. It doesn't belong true. there. So Is it part of your rising action? No, get rid of it. Unless you can justify it being there. Character. Are your characters real? Are they three-dimensional? Are they people? Can Have you been able to breathe life into these people? Do we love them? Do we hate them? Whatever it is, do they evoke some kind of emotion in us? Setting. Is it a real place? Is it a real time? Does it make sense? Do these characters really live in the place you created for them. Plot, character, setting, theme. Is it something that anybody cares about? Is it something that you care about? She became very much a part of your life. Those scars put a scar on your brain. Yeah, absolutely. And, and cause you to need to write. Plot, character, setting, theme, and tone. Did you create an aura, a feeling about this book that drew us in, that made us part of your world. Yeah, um, 
I was just at the beach and uh, I saw a guy, older man, he had it. I knew right away what it was. And yeah. It just hit me. Like, wow, he just went through wow. that. Yeah, big, and that's big. amazing. And, and hit you enough <clears throat> not only to write a short story, but a novel as well. Yeah, uh, it just did. I can't explain why. I don't even bother doing that anymore. No. If it hits you, you just and go And it doesn't with it. matter why. Right, right. You know, it's, right. why did you have a child? <laughs> I don't know, because I wanted a child, yeah. because it was my time to have a child. This was your time to speak for this girl. Yeah, uh, maybe bring some awareness to it. Um, you know, it's, it's tragic. It's beautiful, but also tragic. Yeah, it, it's beautifully tragic. Yeah. Uh, so, where we go now? Uh, again, <laughs> short stories I've been working on. I've had a couple of publications uh, in the last year, which has been great. And I'm going to stay with those for a while, um, just till my kids get a little older. A couple yeah. of more years of short stories. You're certainly not going to give up writing. No, God, no. I can't. <laughs> no, you know, if I go too long good. without it, I feel like something's missing. Yeah. I've learned that. So I hear you. Uh, I have to keep writing, even if stuff gets rejected yeah. and... I have to do it. A kid said to me, Mr. DeQuino, how do you know you're a writer? And I said, are you haunted? He said, yeah. you mean like ghosts? Exactly. I mean, yeah, sort of like ghosts. Do stories play in your head? And do, do you kind of like hear the stories? He said, yeah, you're a writer, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's if the first part. If you're haunted by the stories you need to tell, you are a writer. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you got to sit down and put in the work. That's the part a lot of people don't realize. There's a there's a romance to writing, right? Yeah. Uh, but there's also a craft. You and really got to sit down and do it. It's uniting with your characters. It's commiserating. It's working together. It's spending time with your characters. It's entering a world that no one else is in. Yep. And there's people who don't get it. And, you know, there's people who say, oh man, you waste so much time writing. Yo, if you have the nerve to say I'm wasting time, you don't get it. That's right, exactly. You, you haven't yeah. been there. Fortunately, my wife never said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, she, does she understand? She does. Um, I'm blessed that, uh, you know, she'll when she knows I'm really yeah. serious, she'll keep the kids off of me. Yeah, for the, it took my wife a yeah, long time to yeah. get it. That it's it's a world. Now, she's honest about it. She's not always willing to share it. It's like having another lover, and she yeah, doesn't exactly. like me spending time with my other lover. Well, I had my lover when I met my wife, so she yeah. had to accept it. <laughs> I was already go. doing it when we met ten years ago. Oh, so, so. oh, that's it. So, yeah. so you was so already you who were I already was. there. Yeah, I I published my first book shortly after I was married, uh, very shortly. I, I was married in 79. My book came out in 80, maybe 80. Uh, oh, wow. I don't remember if the hardcover came out in 80, and then the paperback came out in 81, uh, all around the same time. And the baby was born, our first child was born in 80. So that's a game changer. all those things yeah, happened at that's the same huge. time. Game changer. Yeah, and you have to say, yeah, but this is a child too, and this yeah, child absolutely. needs tending just like all the rest. And it's very hard. And there's a lot of writers who never became published because they couldn't separate that time. You know, and they just, you have to realize that it takes time. And it takes devotion. And writing does. does. So, your, your new book? <laughs> Probably, uh, there are there is some work done um, on a book. So you I got keep, started? Yeah. Uh, I keep They're going still back infants? The, they're infants. Um, I would say, give it a couple of more years. My website will show short story links that I've had All published. Right. I know. Uh, Do you think that the short stories are going the same way? Will they develop possibly. into a novel you know or what? will you do a completely different topic? Quite possibly. Uh, a lot of writers have done that and uh, I don't know. That's a yeah, good question. Not there I just yet. don't know. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I don't know. 
Uh, so you're in the early stages of pregnancy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, we are getting close, Joe. Yeah. Uh, words of wisdom to those writers out there. <sighs> Understand that it's a craft and you have to work on it. It is a craft. Uh, yeah, and yeah. You got to bring your toolbox. Yep. And you got you to learn and, how to use those tools. And, uh, and hard work takes sweat. Yeah, and don't uh, persistence. Right, and don't compare yourself to what famous writers are doing. It's very different. Yeah, uh, you know. And no two writers are alike. That's right. Uh, don't buy into the Roman numeral outline. <laughs> that we all learned as kids that it doesn't have to work like that. Yeah. Uh, just and a, yet, yeah. yet I know writers who who do. They they write a, a Roman numeral outline and they follow it right to the end of the book, yeah, Joe. Yeah. Could I yeah. do it? No. I Never couldn't could. give yourself a lot of freedom as a writer. Yeah. Uh, I like to be surprised at where my book is going. I mean, there, I, I've said this before. I remember one scene, I made myself cry. I'm That's writing wonderful. the book, and the boy's dog dies. And he's on the bed hugging this dead dog who he grew up with since he was a baby. And I cried. I'm writing the book, and wow. tears are rolling down my face as the, as the kids. Well, I had no idea when I sat down that that dog was going to die. I had no idea he would be on the bed hugging this lifeless dog. Question for you. Uh, yeah. Do you give your work to anybody to read before you move on with it? I do. I do. I share my work because I, I, I do have a writer's workshop. Okay. I meet right. every week with writers. I don't always share my work with them. I share their work. But I don't always share mine. Uh, I'm not always ready right, okay. to do that. Uh, I like to see my book. I like to work my pieces before I share them. And I like them to be almost done because I, I never know for sure right. what the book is until it's done. Until I'm on that last page, I'm never sure. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing this time with Joe. You want to be a writer, be ready to work. You want to be a writer, be ready to share and to give. Joe, Thanks. thank you for sharing and giving to us today. You're welcome. Keep doing what you're doing. When you finish your next book, get yourself back here. All right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being part of One on One with Joe Logodis.